So we'll we'll get right into the preaching this evening. Going to be a little bit different tonight. Slow down just a tad. Do a little more uh, teaching during the message tonight. So I need you to get your Bibles and follow along with me this evening. We'll start out John eight forty four, and um, uh, then we're going to go to several other scriptures tonight. So I do need you to keep your Bibles handy. John chapter eight. If you will listen to me tonight and take notes, you will know after I get through this evening more about life and humanity and the way the world works than the professors at the major universities in this country. I don't say that in a proud, arrogant way. I say that because they leave the Bible out. All the world, the social world, the government, looks at life and humanity through the lens of strictly secular humanism. And we look at things through the Word of God and what the Bible says. Now tonight, I'm going to read you about the devil, and then I'm going to preach about this subject tonight. I'm going to preach about tonight the words of the devil. Now, I'm not going to preach about the devil a lot tonight. I'm going to preach about the words the devil spoke. Look at John 8, 44. Jesus told them Pharisees and them people there, he said, You're the father, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, tonight, um, of all the old horror stories and movies, we have the devil talking in a deep voice with a lot of echo and reverb on it. Sometimes they'll have the devil talking in a, in a voice of, whoa, whoa, float down like that, you know, uh, real slow, and you think, well, that's the way the devil sounds. Sometimes it's in a very sneaky, seductive kind of a voice uh, and, or scary something, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'd know exactly how the devil's voice sounded, but I know what he says. And I know what he says. And tonight, I'm going to show you every time in the Bible the devil ever said anything. Let me show you something that 90% of Christians in America don't even know. The devil, as far as we have a record, only spoke to three people ever, ever. There's no record of him ever speaking to a normal human being. He spoke to Eve in the Garden of Eden. He spoke to God in the book of Job. And he spoke to Jesus Christ there when the temptation. There's no record of the devil ever speaking to anybody else. I'm sure he does. Uh, A lot of times uh, he'll put things in your head and he'll put thoughts in your head. Now somebody said, well, the devil said back before time, I will ascend, and that, but that, that said he said that in his heart. Those are not words that he spoke. I've got the only three times the devil ever spoke in the Bible, and I'm going to show them to you tonight. Now, my reason for doing this is to help you to be educated so when you hear somebody saying this stuff, you know that they are led by, inspired by the devil or his philosophy. So when somebody says what I'm getting ready to show you in the Bible or sounds like it, kin to it, you know they're inspired by the devil or the wrong spirit. Watch this tonight. Uh, and we'll, we'll now compare his words. In Psalm 140, verse 3, the Bible said, They have sharpened their tongue like a serpent. And so you're going to hear, every time you turn the news on, every time you turn the TV on, you're going to hear somebody quoting the devil. And you're going to hear somebody saying, that sounds just like what Brother Danny said, the devil said. Then you'll know where it's coming from. The reason scientists and, uh, and uh, uh, doctors and lawyers and governors and rulers of this world can't understand human nature is because they leave out the spiritual element and don't acknowledge the fact of sin in the world and that there's a devil. You can trace the actions of God through history, and you can trace the actions of the devil through history. So tonight, let's take our Bibles now, and I'm going to show you the only three times in the Bible the devil ever spoke. Ready? Genesis chapter 3. 
We're starting way back there in the book of Genesis. Our first parents here, Adam and Eve. And the Bible said here, that the, the Bible said here in Genesis chapter number 3, there is nothing in the Bible by accident, folks. And the Bible said this, and the serpent, that, uh, the devil used the serpent here, uh, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman. Now, the devil, the first time, chose to, chose to spoke to the woman that eat the weaker vessel. Ladies, remember that. Whenever you hear this kind of philosophy coming through TV, through your friends at work, pops in your head, some book you read, some song you hear, you know that it is the devil talking to you. He basically said three things to her. Number one, he said, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, so the first thing the devil ever said in history that's recorded is yea. Yes, it's positive, positive, positive. The devil never said no, he said yes. He come to Eve and he said, yes, Eve, positive thinker. And the devil said, uh, uh, did, uh, God said, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden. So the first thing the devil ever said in history was he put a question mark on what God had said. Don't ever, ever forget that. Ladies and gentlemen, when somebody puts a question mark on the Word of God, you know it is not of God. It is coming from the devil. His first words were, in our language, how do you know the Bible is really true? When they sat around on the talk shows on TV, and one of them says, but we don't really know that the Bible's true. That's Satan coming to them. When somebody comes to and they said, uh, but the Bible has all kinds of interpretations. That's Satan coming through them. When they sit around and said, uh, people don't understand, but uh, Mark didn't really write Mark, and John didn't really write John, and, and the apostles wasn't real, and Adam and Eve wasn't real people. That's Satan coming through them. Yea, hath God said. Remember that. The first thing the devil ever said was he questioned what God said. Now, I'm telling you, if you ever question what this book said, you know where it's coming from. You know, when you go to court, used to, they still do a lot of places, they'll have a man put his right hand on the Bible or his left hand on the Bible and raise his hand up out of heaven like that and said he swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And there is no other book in the world that a man can put his hand on and say that is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. There ain't nothing but the truth inside this book right here. And it is the whole truth. And it is the truth. The way, Jesus said, thy word is forever. The Lord said, thy word is forever still in heaven. The Lord said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Somebody says this, but does that really mean, does hell really mean hell? I mean, how do you know it don't mean just eternal separation from God? They're quoting the devil. They are led by the devil. They are inspired by the devil. What about all the other religions in the world? That's the devil. When you hear somebody say that, they are led by the devil. Everybody interprets the Bible differently. They are led by the devil. You don't interpret the Bible. You just read it and believe it. If Jesus said there's a burning fire, you don't interpret that. You just believe it. If he said there's mansions in heaven, you don't have to interpret that. You just believe it. I, I, don't, have, I don't have a bit of sympathy for people. I, I meet people all the time and say, well, now, when you read the Bible, you might get one thing. And I read the Bible, I might get something else. And it might mean completely something different to me. And, you know, that's, that's uh, uh, relative truth. 
They say, what I get out of it is true for me, and what you get out of it is true for you. So we really might have two different truths for both of them. There ain't no such thing as that. There's only one truth. There's only one way. There's only one right doctrine. There's only one right teaching. There's only one right preaching. And the Bible said for you to study it and show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. There's no excuse for you adults in here tonight not knowing what's right and what's wrong. If you've got a third grade education, you can read the Bible and find out what's right. Amen. Amen. Uh, somebody said, well, you, uh, truth is relative. No, it's not. Truth is absolute. There's absolute truth, and there's absolute right, and absolute wrong. One man said, learn how to be deaf to the devil. That's good advice. Learn how to be deaf to the devil. You know, we ain't got time to preach on this tonight, but what should Eve have done? Is she standing there shopping, just looking around, wasn't wanting to buy nothing? That's what got her in trouble. And she's standing there looking at that tree, and all of a sudden goes, poof. And he comes out, this beautiful creature, and says, you want a bite? And instead of saying, no, God says we're not supposed to eat that, she should have turned around and said, Adam! That's right. And boy, Adam would have come over here and said, I rebuke you, get out of here. Uh, but instead, she started talking to him. And started that conversation. Oh, they just text back and forth there for a little while. And then it got a little more serious and a little more serious. Amen. And uh, and the next thing you know, uh, they even done messed up and the whole world messed up after her. So the first thing the devil ever said was he put a question mark on the Word of God. Notice, notice the next thing that he said. He said uh, in verse number 3, he, he said, God has said, you shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. So the next thing the devil said is, he denied any danger in disobeying God. Anytime one of your friends tells you to disobey God and says, it's all right, it won't hurt you, you ain't going to get hooked, one time, you can try it, you can quit any time you want to. You know the devil is speaking through them. The devil told Eve, you won't die. Well, listen to me, people. When a voice comes in your head, when somebody you work with, when some book you read or some TV show you got comes through and says, go ahead and drink, go ahead and get high, Go ahead and commit fornication. It won't hurt you. That's the devil talking to you. You shall not surely die. That's the devil. Amen? Here's what the devil says. You ain't going to get hooked. As long as you love each other, it's all right. That's the way the devil talks. In this case, I can see it's okay. How do you know unless you try it? What's right for you may not be right for me. You have to seek out what's right for you and feel comfortable. Can I say something this, morning, this evening? You should know it because you go to a Bible-believing church. But once in a while we have to nail it down. Whatever's right is right for all of us. And whatever's wrong is wrong for all of us. It ain't like I got a set of rules, he's got a set of rules, she's got a set of rules. If it's wrong for me, it's wrong for you. Once in a while, once in a while you do something and people say, oh, why don't you do this? Say, but, yeah, but you're a preacher. Uh-uh, don't start that junk. You ain't going to pull that junk on me. If it's wrong for me to do it, it's wrong for you to do it. Amen? What's right, right. What's wrong, wrong. If it's wrong for me to do something, it's wrong for you to do it. But you're a preacher. But you're a Christian. Amen? He denied any danger of it. The devil's never too busy to rock the cradle of a sleeping saint. So the first time the devil spoke, he said, question, do you really think God really meant that? When you start thinking, I know the Bible says that, but do you think it really means that? Well, that's a devil working in you when you hear like that. Or anybody that says that. I was witnessing a man one time, and he said, you know all these preachers preach about hell. I've learned that hell is nothing but like your basement. It's a pit, like where you put potatoes down in the basement. That's the devil told that man that. See, 
Yea, hath God said. Did God... Oh, I know He said that. But is that really what He meant? Yeah, it sure is. If He said it, that's what He meant. If He meant it, He said it. And if He said it, He meant it. And your problem ain't understanding it. Your problem's just agreeing with it and obeying it. And then the next thing He done is He actually suggested much advantage by it. He goes so far as to tell Eve, you'd be better off if you did. If you'd smoke a little pot, it would open up your understanding. You know, there's people that believe that. I tell me one time, a guy tell me one time, he said, man, I can get, smoke a joint and I can see all kinds of things in the Bible. I said, I bet you can. I bet you can see all kinds. But it ain't the Holy Ghost. You see demons and get false doctrine. You know what he told Eve? He said, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes will be opened. That's true. And you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So you see what the devil does? He'll give you a little bit of truth, and the poison's on the inside. Was her eyes open? Yes. Was she knowing good and evil? Yes. Was she better off? No. You see how he gets you? See, the devil, it's like this. Well, you need to go to college, and we need to teach all points of view to broaden your intellect. That's the devil. You don't need to know every ungodly, demonic, false doctrine in this world. You be wise concerning good and simple concerning evil. You'd be better off not to know nothing but your Bible than to know everything else and not believe it. Say amen. amen right there. Hallelujah, brother. He suggested much advantage. You've lived for other people long enough. When a voice comes to you and says, you've given enough, why don't you let somebody else? It's about time you started doing something for yourself. That's Satan. That's Satan. God don't talk to you like that. You're sitting around and somebody says to you, you know what, you've tried to live for other people all your life. Why don't you start putting yourself first? That's the devil talking to you. That's the devil! God don't tell you that! Listen, in this case, I know you know that you're a man and he's a man, but if you really love each other, or you're a woman and she's a woman, and if you really love each other, how, God is love, so how could God be against that. You start thinking like that, it's the devil telling you that. It's the devil telling you that your kids will be better off if y'all got divorced. A man told me, they said, well, we'd be better off to just divorce than to stay together and fight all the time. I said, why do you think that's your only two choices? There is another choice. Stay together and don't fight all the time. Both get right with God. Both stay together. Now, if one won't, they won't. If they can't, you can't. But I'm saying, brother, that's what the devil, the devil will tell you, you'd be better off if you just got a divorce and your kids would be better off. No, no. You are never, ever, ever better off going against what God said to do. The devil will say, don't make yourself miserable just for other people. Be true to yourself. Follow your heart. Follow your dreams. The Lord don't talk to you like that. I, they tell kids nowadays, you can do anything you want to if you'll just believe it. That is the biggest bunch of bull I've ever heard in my life. Now, I think you ought to have goals and visions and all that in the Lord, but the truth is, you'll never be able to jump over this building with these two legs. I won't, you won't, Nobody else can. It's, 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 like, it's teaching self-confidence and self-esteem to tell people you can do anything you want. Now, I understand if you work hard, pray hard, put God first, with God's help, I can do all things. How? Through Christ, who strengthened me. In myself, I can do nothing. That's the first time the devil ever spoke. He said, he put a question mark on the Word of God, he told her there was no harm in sinning, and he actually told her she'd be better off if she did sin. Anytime 
Anybody says anything that sounds like that, the devil's talking through them to you. Second, take your Bible, turn to Job chapter 1. Second time the devil spoke in the Bible. And we'll show you here. In the book of Job, right before Psalms, look at Job chapter number 1 this, this evening. And we'll look here. The oldest book in the world, the book of Job. The oldest book in the Bible, the book of Job. Lots of reasons for believing that. Won't take time to get into tonight. Let's read the words of the devil in Job chapter number 1. These words are spoken to God in heaven. First time he spoke, spoke to Eve. Second time he spoke, spoke to God in heaven. All right, you ready? Job 1, 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. See how he quotes a little scripture and then leaves out the rest of it? See how he gives her high truth? I'll get back to this in a minute. Hold your finger there. Here's the real truth. From going to and fro in the earth and walking down up in it, seeking whom I may devour. See how he leaves that part off? See how the devil, what he said was true. He is going to see if the devil says something that sounds true, it's always a half truth or stops short of the whole truth. So the devil says, I'm going back, some going to and fro, walking up and down in it. That's true. Seeking whom he may devour. Conveniently left that part out. Watch out for a crook that'll tell you part of a truth and conveniently leave the part out that'll hurt you. Now we'll get back to that in a minute. So God said that, the devil said that. Now look at verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, this is a study, they don't know nothing about it. Yale, Harvard, Princeton, or the University of North Carolina, people in Raleigh have no clue unless they're a Christian professor or teacher. Thank God there's some. Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, true, and his substance increased in the land, true, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he'll curse you to your face. You know what the devil says? Anytime you hear somebody talk like this, they're quoting the devil. No wonder they live right. Look what they've got. I'd live right too if I had their house and their money and their husband or their, their wife. Good night, they've got it made. You heard anybody talk like that? You ever think like that? Well, Lord, it's all, I can't help it. I'm a sinner. If I had what they had, I'd live right too. That's the only reason they live right because you blessed them. That's the devil talking through you. And that's the devil putting that in your head. Amen? That it's just as hard them live right as it is you. You can't say, well, good night, no wonder. They, I've had people tell me that to my face. Good night, Danny. Look what all God's blessed you with. And I tell them, that ain't no excuse for you not to live right. You, got, you think I got all the advantages? Are you crazy? Lord have mercy. Uh, every dog got just enough fleas to remind us we're still dogs. And everybody got something that holds them down, holds them back. I don't care how smart, how intelligent, how talented, how uh, sharp their mind is, they all got something that holds them back. Now, I'm going to finish reading, then we're going to go back and comment on this. Verse 11, he said, put forth your hand now, and he'll cuss you to your face. Chapter 2, Job chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fears God and his choose evil, and still hold fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without a cause? Verse 4. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Yea, 
all that a man hath to give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, touch his bone and his flesh. Man, that hurts. God starts hitting your bones and your flesh. And he said he'll curse you to your face. See that? That's God's joke, uh, the devil's words to God. Half truth. First, he didn't tell him what he'd really been up to. He said, I've just been walking up and down in the earth. See that? Listen, when you're messing with the devil, people, you are messing with the second highest power in the universe. He's brilliant. People say, can the devil read your mind? And the answer is no, because he's not all-knowing, but he can 99% of the time. He's been doing this for 6,000 years. He knows human nature good enough that he can guess what you're thinking about 99% of the time. Even though he's not omniscient like God, he can still read your mind most of the time. He's not all-knowing, but he'll get, your, he'll get it right most of the time and know what me and you are thinking. I'm telling you, we're dealing with the enemy of God and the enemy of your soul and your family and your friends and your marriage and your home and your own life. He usually don't tell a flat-out lie, but covers it up in truth so he can get you to believe it. And he talks like this. No wonder Job serves you. It's not that you're so great. And it's not that he's so great. He serves you because you've blessed him. Take that stuff away from him. He'll cuss you to your face. And the Lord said that the devil moved him against Job. What about that? What about that? Moved God against Job. Man, there's your study, fellas. He moved God. He said, though thou movest me against him. And God started letting the, de the devil take what Job had. Bam, sheep, bam, our camels, oxen, kids dying, family, friends. Then he loses his health and everything. And, and, and the devil said, he'll cuss, he'll cuss. Now Job held his integrity, and Job stayed right with God. That's another message. We ain't got into that. We're, we're dealing tonight with the words of the devil. So make sure you understand. I've heard preachers say, well, no wonder that preacher's got a big, good church. Look what he's got to work with. Look what he see. That ain't the that ain't the Lord making you talk like that. No wonder that God's blessed him. In other words, saying I'm as good as they are. If I had what they had, I'd do what they're doing. That ain't right. The salad bar always looks greener. You ever notice that when you go to the steakhouse, that food over there looks better. Boy, I want some of that. And you walk around there, then you see something on that other side you wished you'd got. That's the way, that's the way we're, we are, we're natured that way. That's the way the devil, uh, when, when, when somebody says this, I do everything around here. You don't do nothing. Now, look up here now, it's not time to pray. You heard that? Anybody heard that? Has she quoted the devil? Has he quoted the devil? Well, I have to do it all. You don't do nothing. Now, is that true? They don't do nothing? Or are you just trying to make a point to make yourself look good? He'll do anything to stay alive, the devil said. And Job passed the test. Thirdly, take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter number 4. The third and final time the devil speaks in the Bible. Now, this is the Mount of Temptation when Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. You need to remember that this same story is recorded in Mark and recorded in Luke. That don't mean it happened three times. So I'm just saying this is the only time the devil spoke. There's three accounts of this one story. So it's not like three different times, okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke. There's three accounts of the first coming. That's why we teach there's three account, four accounts of the first coming. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Four accounts of the second coming there in the book of Revelation. We'll talk about that later. But look here, what he said. Matthew chapter number 4. Then Jesus, verse 1, was led of the Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he'd be fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was after the hunger. Here he comes. Here's what the devil says. The first thing he said, 
If thou be the Son of God. If. If. If thou be the Son of God, command these stones and that they be made bread. Everything's wrong with that statement. Everything he said there was wrong. First of all, he shouldn't have said, if you're the Son of God. If you ever hear somebody or catch yourself thinking, well, if God's real, what? there's the devil coming to him right there. If there's a God, why? You see? If God's real, how come? There they go. Wrong. The devil's coming to them. You hear somebody on TV saying, well, if the Bible's true, how come people are born uh, with things wrong with them? How come little kids are born uh, deformed? How come this has happened, that's happened? Why are there wars? If that's the devil talking to them. Learn that. You're going to have more education than a college professor if he's not saved if you'll get this tonight. Whenever you hear anybody say, if, if the Bible's true, why do they, you just know to ignore them right then because the devil's talking to them. If you're the Son of God, I'm not saying you're not. I'm saying if you are. See? You ain't going to get nowhere like that. You ain't going to get nowhere praying saying, Lord, if you're up there, please help me. That ain't going to get you nowhere. That's the way the devil said. Lord, if you're the Son of God, Command these stones to be made bread. Now notice how slick and smooth that is. Number one, you answer me. Who owned them rocks? The Lord did. They're his rocks. Number two, if he wanted to turn rocks into bread, could he do it? Yes. Number three, if he wanted to turn rocks into bread and make bread, would there be anything wrong with it? No. Except the devil wanted him to do it. Now, you're going to learn more than a college professor. I'm telling you, if you'll listen to me right here. Sometimes the devil, if the devil's telling you to do something seemingly good, it's still wrong if the devil's one telling you to do it. So, the Lord said, you say, well, I'm getting confused. Just keep listening. The devil, here's the rock. The devil said, if you're the son of God, turn that rock. You're hungry, ain't you? Yes. You're a rock, ain't it? Yes. You can turn it under the red if you want to. You got the power. Yes. Well, then do it. Now, there's a lot here. Number one, you're going to see this. Jesus worked plenty of miracles for other people. He never worked one miracle for himself. Learn that. Remember that. Jesus never used his supernatural power for himself. He was always touching a blind man, feeding the 5,000. When he died on the cross, he never used one miraculous power. He took it, it hurt him just like it hurt us. I mean, flesh, bang, bang. He never used his power. For his own benefit. You see how much, you, if you got that right there, you're smarter than most educators in this country. Jesus, his, his, his miracle working power is not for a sideshow. It's not a circus. His miracle working power was completely, totally, 100% to help other people get to the Lord. So if a man claims he's working miracles and he's getting benefits out of it, he ain't doing neither one. If you're the son of God, you have liberty, right? Would it be all right if you turn that rock into bread? Yeah. Well, won't you do it? Cause. Man will not live by bread alone. That's why. What do you think about that? Amen? Hey, people, listen to me for a second. Here's, when you hear somebody say this, well, you need to understand the mes mes medical, medicinal purposes of marijuana. Since God made it, it must be good, right? Wrong. Somebody wrote a letter to me the other day on, on one of our, my messages on YouTube and said, somebody tell this man to quit saying stuff about pot. It's, it's an herb that God... Yeah, and, and that somebody is too dumb to realize that Genesis 3 comes after Genesis 2. And in Genesis 2, everything was good. And in Genesis 3, the curse came on the earth. And from then on, everything ain't good. There's good stuff and bad stuff. Of course, they, people like that don't understand the Bible anyway. They just pick out little truths every now and then to get to live like I want to. Or charge the boss more money 
than you're supposed to because you think you deserve it anyway. A man sitting right here tonight called me the other day. He said, Brother Danny, they're asking me to do things on my job that I don't feel like is right. What should I do? I said, well, do what you think is right, brother. Follow your heart and the Word of God with your heart through God's Word and tell him, tell him, and he did. He did. Don't have a job no more. His heart's right. And he was getting paid for something he wasn't really doing. We ordered him basketball shirts. And, and I paid for them. My money. Church don't pay for nothing like that. My money out of my pocket. And when someone was too little, so I sent them back, and I was going to swap a large for an extra large. Or a double X. And our basketball team's got bigger over the years. Same people. And, uh, but anyway, uh, they, they, uh, they, they said, we'll ship it to you, Mr. Castle. And a double X costs $5 more than a single X. And they said, well, it'll be $10 shipping, and all the charges was $10. And I told the woman, I tried to call them, and the bad thing about calling a place like that is you can't never, you can't never get a person. All you get is a blessed machine, and you can't talk to the stupid thing. And I said, I want a person. Will somebody talk to me? And I told this lady, I said, now look, I know there's supposed to be an extra charge for a double X because I felt guilty taking a double X when he's supposed to pay $5 more for it. You say, that's silly, brother. I'm telling you, I felt like I, I felt wrong doing it. Amen? Now, you didn't feel wrong? That's, that's you. But I did. And I finally told the guy, I said, look, I don't feel right. I need to, I need to clear this up. We got a double X coming, but we only paid for a single X. It's supposed to be five dollars more. And the lady on the phone said, it's all right, sir. We just put that in there for you. Don't worry about it. And I went, oh, I'm glad I cleared my conscience. It ain't worth $5 go around feeling guilty and feel like you've done something wrong. Amen? I mean, clear your conscience. Keep your heart right. And don't, don't let the devil put false guilt on you. But he's saying, he say, now, it's all right for you to turn that into bread, ain't it? Well, yeah, if I wanted to. But I ain't going to. Just because you told me to. I ain't going to do it just because the devil said to. Sometimes... You ought to be doing one thing. The devil will tell you, oh, you should be reading your Bible. And as soon as you start reading your Bible, he'll say, you should be witnessing. And as soon as you witness, he'll say, you should be praying. And ain't nothing wrong with none of them, but he'll keep you from doing what God wants you to do. I mean, you, it, it, it's tough sometimes. The Lord will work a miracle. Verse number 6. And saith unto him, here's the second thing he said to the Lord, one more and I'm done. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give His angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. He said, If you're the Son of God, jump off this building. He ain't going to let you get hurt. And the Lord said again, No, I don't have miracle working power to serve for a circus sideshow. Well, I don't do this just for because I don't work miracles just because I can. I work miracles when people need help and only for them, not for my own benefit or for myself. That's the right way to do. Uh, people, make sure you're in the right spirit. And sometimes people don't listen to what I say. I said something in a message here not long ago. I don't even know what it was. Said something about alcohol, something like that. And some guy wrote this big long letter and said, Why don't he talk about drugs? Why don't he talk about drugs? And I thought, Man, you ain't listening. You ain't listening. I talk about drugs. People pick out parts of it. It's like the other night. You know, the other night when it just popped out, I said something about them things y'all wear. You let it. And I've got about four comments since then of people saying, Oh, brother, daddy don't like them leggings. Listen, you ain't listening. Let me say this clear. There ain't nothing wrong with leggings. What's wrong is, is when you forget to put your skirt on. That's what I'm saying. Are you deaf? Okay, can I get any clearer than that? If you forget your skirt, it's wrong. 
I said, boy, that's a nice shirt. And she's got on nice tights. Where's her skirt? People don't listen. People don't listen. Do you need it any clearer? You, you girl, you ladies ought to know how you ought to dress when you come to church. You ain't dumb. You're just playing dumb. You know you are. I've seen ladies come and bring them a skirt and run in the bathroom and change before they could come in here. Oh, you're fussing. No, you just ain't listening. You ain't listening. You got a listening problem. Listen to me. If thou the Son of God, do this, do that, do this, do that. I didn't say smoking and send you to hell. I just said have enough respect for God's house not to smoke it. Somebody about blew us to kingdom come in the women's bathroom this morning. There's a gas furnace back there, you nut. I don't think you're here tonight, but I think somebody come on the bus. But Lord, help us gas back there. I didn't plan on all that. Throw that in there for free. Last thing the devil said to the Lord was, look here what he said in verse 9. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. But he throwed it all at him that time, didn't he? Boat barrels. Boat barrels. I'll give you everything. Now the question doctrinally comes up this. I know preachers disagree on this. I know preachers that say, see, the devil runs all the kingdoms of the world because he said, I give it to whom I will. And I've never felt comfortable about agreeing with that because the devil said it. And anything the devil said, I got serious doubts about. It's either a lie or it's wrapped up in a lie. So you're going to hear me say this, and a lot of preachers would disagree with me. But you check me out, see if I'm right by the book. If the devil said, you know where they get that? I give all the kingdoms in the world, I'm in control of the world, and I give it to whoever I want. The devil said that. That ain't completely true. It may be largely true. The world is lying in wickedness. The world is laying in the lap of the devil. But every time a king goes down or a king goes up, it ain't always the devil. Many times it is. Put it like this. The devil's will is usually done. God's will is seldom done. I hear people say, well, whatever the results of the election are, we'll just take it as God's will. You're crazy. God's will is seldom done. I don't believe the devil's will was done in the presidency. I believe the devil wanted Hillary to be president. The world of the I don't I didn't say God wanted Trump. I didn't say that. You ain't listening again. You're forgetting your skirt. <laughs> See, when I say something like this, somebody runs and says, Oh, Brother Danny said God wanted Trump. You, you ain't listening, your problem. Listen to me. I said the devil wanted Hillary. He did. He did. Because I see he's wanted Hillary. And the one world government, the Antichrist spirit wanted her. I'm not saying God wanted Trump. I wanted Ben Carson. That's who I would have wanted. And I think the Lord might have too. God's will is seldom done. The devil's will is usually done. So the devil says, I control all the kingdoms of the world. That ain't completely right. Sometimes if people pray and do right, God might raise a king or move a king. He did in the Old Testament. So just don't believe what the devil says, y'all. The devil ain't in control of everything. He's in control of most things. But you can't deny that. And he said, if you're the son of God, I'll give you everything. It ain't his gift. He don't have it all in his power. He can only do what God permits him to do. He couldn't touch Job till God gave him permission. God's sovereign over all. He lets the devil control the world. When people pray, sometimes God will intervene and stop the devil. I've seen him do it. He's holding his hand over this place right now. The devil would kill me tonight. If the devil had complete control over this world, he'd have somebody come in here and shoot me and kill. i get rid of all of me tonight. God's got some power, and he's holding him off of us. The words of the devil was, I'll do anything I want. I'll give you this and that if you'll serve me. Remember this, ladies. If a voice comes to you and says, you know that guy at work? He's cute. Or that guy at the gym or that guy at the game 
or that guy at the bowling alley, and he likes you, and you're like, if, if you'll serve me, I'll give you that. So what he means is, if you'll flirt and do my will, I'll let you have something that'll make you, remember, he's lying. He's lying to you. He's lying to you. All this will I give you if you'll worship me. Just give in and do what I want you to do, and I'll give you this, and I'll give you that, and you'll give you that. He ain't able to deliver. All right? You now are educated. Every time you hear somebody talk like that, they're led by, influenced by, or inspired by Satan. Let's stand by our head for prayer. That's only three times in the Bible.